in this video i will show you my pvp build which i think it's gonna become one of the metas as soon as the rifles get nerfed and when the time to kill gets a little bit more tankier it is still pretty good right now though but when a classic m1 ak is one shot you to the face no matter what then yeah it's pretty hard to counter that but if this sounds interesting then let's get started So before we actually take a look at the build, I just want to quickly go through the specialization. Because I think when it comes to PvP, there's one that stands out a bit more than everything else. And that's the new spec Firewall. So one of the really strong things with Firewall is that it got this talent right here. On armor break, apply burn to enemies within 5 meters. So if you are fighting in PvP, a lot of the times they're gonna be pretty close. And if they push close to you, they get your armor destroyed, you will apply a burn to them. Which means they can't ADS and their character stops shooting for a little bit. And if they are not prepared for it, which a lot of people aren't yet, then you will get a second or two, maybe even longer sometimes, and that will turn the fight completely. Other than that, the armor kit is pretty strong as well. It's 200% armor and 200% health over 10 seconds, so over time instead of instant. Which can be really really powerful if you cheese this. As soon as you take damage and somebody want to fight you. You can use the armor kit and just face tank them. Pretty stupid in my opinion. But that's what you can do. It also have health on kill and burn duration I guess. But it's mainly this armor on break burn that I think is super super strong. And the armor kit. Of course you could play other specializations depending on what build though. But for this build in particular. I would definitely go with firewall. So let's take a look at the build though. So it is a 4 piece to Patriot with 2 brand sets. RK and Petro. So if you have watched my videos you should know by now that the Contractor Gloves, the name one, is the best in slot when it comes to gloves. And the good thing here since we are playing a LMG is that we actually do get the LMG damage bonus as well. So the reason why these gloves are so good is because they come with 11% damage to armor which is a multiplicative stat. Then I also do have RK and the reason they are good though is because of the incoming repairs. Because incoming repairs actually affects all the armor healing in the game as far as I know. So you can see that I'm using Unbreakable and this actually works with incoming repair. So instead of getting 50% from Unbreakable I'm gonna get way way higher value. I haven't checked this in a while how much I get though but I think I'm gonna show you guys that later on. But I think I'm gonna show you guys later or maybe in the intro how like good this is actually working. So incoming repair increased unbreakable. It also do increase the bonus from true patron. So with that said we can go through the four piece true patron. So two pieces ammo capacity which is not good at all. Like rather have something else but hey. This three piece is 30% mag size which is actually pretty useful. So increasing that mag size for some guns is really really crucial. Sure I would like damage but having mag size is still decent to have. But of course when it comes to gear sets it's all about the 4 piece bonus. So this one is called red, white and blue. And every 2 seconds enemies you shoot receive a stacking debuff of red, white and blue. So right now you can see that it's blue. So I mark him and then he will get a blue flag. Now it turns to white. We hit them once and we get the white flag as well. And now it's red and we get the full flag. Which means if I kill it, bam, it's gonna be an explosion. <laughs> Which is actually pretty fun in PvP. If you watch my Dark Sun videos, I did actually get a, a, almost a four man kill when I downed one guy from that. But anyway, that's how you see the debuff. So what does the different colors do though? So red amplifies the enemy's damage taken by 8%. So basically 8% multiplicative more damage on the enemy. So whatever damage you're doing, you get 8% more. The white flag is the armor repair. So if they have the white flag, you will get 5% healing every second you shoot. So keep in mind what I said earlier with incoming repair, because this actually affects this as well. The blue flag decreased the damage they deal by 8%. So that's really, really useful as well. So looking at all these debuffs, they're actually super, super good when it comes to PvP. And then as I said, if you get the full flag and you kill them during the debuffs, there would be a 5 meter radius explosion dealing damage equal to their total health and armor. So that's quite a big explosion. So you can get some pretty funny moments in PvP with that. So that's how that works. So if we take a look at the guns I'm using though, I am using the pistolens. 
And if you've been watching my videos, you know that I did get this god roll from the cash, which I was not too happy about because I almost had a god roll anyway. It had 13 LMG damage, and there is a lot of other exotics I kind of need. But sure, it's good to have a god roll of it because it's a really good gun, especially when it comes to PvP. So the good thing with the pistol lens is not the, the total damage here or the base damage of the gun, but the talent is really, really good. So when you hit, you get a debuff that deals 100% weapon damage over 10 seconds, and this stacks up to 50 times. Whenever an enemy dies with this debuff, all stacks are transferred to a nearby enemy within 25 meters. So that's quite a big of range. So especially when it comes to solo PvP, this is going to be amazing. Because imagine being in a 1v2 or 3 or 4, you focus one guy, you kill him, and he have a lot of debuffs on him. And then all of those stacks are going to swap to the second guy, and then you continue to fight that guy, he dies, and he got even more stacks on him, and that's going to transfer to the third guy. So really, really good. But something else that I don't think a lot of people know. Hello, my friends. We are just testing some stuff. It would be nice if you wouldn't shoot. Okay, now I'll shoot you. Can you shoot me down, Sleepy? Is there armor? Okay, you're gonna die, probably. Didn't think about that. But basically, if you're fighting somebody and you get a full flag, or let's say you get just a white nice flag, day, which guys. is important here, and you stack up some debuffs, he will take damage over time, and that will act as if you are shooting him, which means you're gonna get the heal every single second, as long as you have the debuff on him. Which means you can stack up somebody with white flag, you shoot him a bit, you shoot him a bit so he gets like at least 20 stacks, and then for 10 seconds before the debuff is gone, you will actually heal every second with that. So really, really strong. And also when you debuff them, it kind of gives you warlike as well, because you will see the debuff and where you damage him. So actually super useful thing to have. So that's why the pistol lens is good. It's also LMG though, but I guess something that I don't like with the pistol lens is the accuracy. The accuracy is really bad. Like it's not good at all. And I guess that comes down to just the, the mods the gun have. Like it have rate of fire mag. It have actually weapon handling, stability. But it do miss a lot of accuracy. Like sure it gets a little accuracy from the weapon handling though. But usually when I play LMGs I like to go accuracy if I don't go like crit for example. But you can't do it here. But that's why I use pistol lens. But let's actually take a look on all the pieces now though. And what I roll on them and why. So starting with the mask here. I'm trying to go a balanced build here, so not everything into red. Actually, like 3 red and 3 blue. So weapon damage and headshot damage on the mask with a blue mod slot. And of course, I put in incoming repairs. Because blue mod slots are really good because you can just stack the incoming repairs. And the reason why I go headshot damage is because gear sets only have one attribute. So getting a lot of crit, it's going to be hard. Because you can only get crit chance or crit damage on one piece, right? Which means you're going to lose out of so much crit. So headshot damage is what I'm going. On the chest piece we have RK which means we can go crit chance and crit damage. I have tried to farm a better piece but the best one I got was when I crafted and it's pretty bad. I do have weapon damage which I want to have. And then headshot damage but of course I don't want to have skill damage. And I would like to have a bit higher headshot damage though but I thought I would record this one before I get a better chest piece. I mean it works. And the rest of the gear is really good. It's just the chest piece that needs to be better. But in a perfect world, I would have headshot damage and probably crit chance or crit damage. This is just the main thing that I want to have weapon damage and headshot damage. So the good thing as well with RK, like it's going to come with skill tier roll. So you have to roll that one. So that's why it's so hard to get a good piece though. But the good thing with RK, even though it comes with skill tier, it does come with a defensive mod slot. And that means more incoming repair. And also the brand set bonus is incoming repair. So it's just a perfect piece for this build. When it comes to weapon talent, I use Unbreakable. Like right now, it's pretty hard with survivability. And I think a lot of the other talents are not that good. I feel like it's a bit weird that I do play Unbreakable now though. But survivability is always key. And right now, it's pretty hard to survive. So that's why I have it. And the other chest piece talents aren't that good though, to be honest. If we check the holster, we have armor on the holster. Like right now, I have a mix of three red, three blues. This might change, but that's what I have right now. So wherever you get the armor or weapon damage, it doesn't matter, right? So max armor roll there. We have 10 headshot damage. I don't know why it's showing so low there. 10 headshot damage on the holster. 
Nah, it's just a bug because this one shows good. And on the backpack, we do have armor and headshot damage with another defensive mod slot. And the thing is, you really want to have the backpack for True Patriot because, because it buffs the flags. So instead of getting 8% more damage and 8% less damage that they do, you get 12%. And the healing goes from 5 to 8. And that 8% gets impacted by incoming repair as well. So <laughs> it's quite a lot of healing. So definitely you want to keep that one. The chest piece that true patriot have is not worth it all it will change the red white and blue from two seconds to 1.5 so not worth the investment and especially when you can have a piece like rk here which is just really good synergy for the build the gloves as i said before best in slot for damage it's a lmg glove as well so really really good weapon damage damage to armor critical hit damage Sure, I would like to have this one on headshot damage, but this piece is what I use for my other builds. I'm not going to mess up my PvE builds to make a PvP build better. But actually, I do think I got that glove recently, so I could actually use my old gloves, which are 12.6. And I could put headshot damage on that. That's probably what I will do later. Then we have the knee pads. And <laughs> unfortunately, I think I deleted those when I had the stash and I deleted stuff. So I used to have Garrel here, I think. But I deleted those. But I did get a new one, 156k armor. Not the highest roll. So I will try to get a max armor roll. But this is fine though. And, uh, and I rolled headshot damage to it as well. So maximum headshot damage. In terms of skills, I really do like to use Pulse. Either the EMP jammer pulse against uh, shields because a lot of people use those or just regular pulse to get the vision. And for skill, I usually use Defender Drum because it does give you damage reduction. But I mean, in terms of skill, you can use whatever you guys want. But I think pulse is crucial to have. And I guess that's basically the build. We can go through the stats here and shake it through here. Swap to the Pestilence. So we have 10 critical hit chance and that comes from my SHD watch. And 40 critical hit damage. One of them coming from the glove as we can see there. I would like to have that to headshot damage. And then we have a shit ton of headshot damage. 130%. The thing is with pestilence as I said though. The accuracy is not that good. So unless you're really close it can be really hard to beam headshots. As of recording this though, I haven't had that much time to play with this build in PvP. I haven't played it at all except the video you might have watched a few hours ago or a day ago. Because I'm currently waiting for the next update when the rifles and M1A are nerfed and when the time to kill is a bit slower. So we will see what I think about this headshot damage stacking. But I think it's probably gonna be pretty good. Even though the accuracy on this gun is not that good. Otherwise I could try crit but I think headshot damage is the way. And that also makes headshot feel so rewarding. And that's something that I always liked. I most of the time always play headshot damage. Because then you can go for headshots. And it's just more fun. Even though it's not all the time in Division it's been rewarding. It's just more fun to play. And I like to have fun when I play video games. Even though it's my job. I like to have fun. 17 armor damage which is multiplicative. From the gloves and from the pestilence. Also from the headshot damage. I do get 20% from the watch. Is that's worth to note. And yeah, I think something else worth looking at here is definitely going to be the incoming repair. So 70% almost in incoming repair, which is a lot. I, I'm actually not 100% sure how this works though, but I assume it just takes 70% of uh, my heal. For example, 8% and then you take that times 1.7, 8 times 1.7, which means that it should be healing me for 13.6 if that's how it's calculated but anyway this is increasing this stuff a lot so like if we would take unbreakable for example that would be 50 times 70 percent that's 85 percent that you get on unbreakable instead of 50 hopefully i already showed that earlier though but yeah the incoming repair is really huge and if you have a healer with this it's gonna amplify all the heals it does as well so you're gonna get instantly healed so definitely a stats a lot of people have been sleeping on though but yeah, I think that's basically it of the build. I'm not sure when I'm going to upload this though. If I'm going to get some gameplay or not. But but I think in terms of gameplay though. I'll probably show some gameplay from when we played in group. I don't think there's going to be any solo gameplay until next update hits though. So yeah, I mean you can see a little bit on the group play. And other than that, I guess you just got to trust what I'm saying. And just actually understand what the build is doing. And you will understand as well that this is going to be 
probably one of the meta builds next update but with that said though we're gonna end the video here thank you guys for watching this video and if you're interested in more division 2 content then make sure to hit that subscribe button see you guys in the next one